Hi folks, it's Sue with you here in Fans of the Framework today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we are going to talk today about leadership and the struggles of leadership and the reasons behind them. So to start this off, you know, what I was thinking about is there's a real difference between being challenged and struggling. So I think being challenged is good, right? I think that there's a lot of great things about, you know, the growth and what we learn when we are challenged. It can be exciting. It can even be fun. We can feel accomplished when we're challenged in whatever it is we're doing. So as leaders, being challenged is actually a good thing, in my view. Um, but there's a difference between being challenged and struggling. And what, what I picture and what I hear from leaders and in conversations, and I was a healthcare leader for more than 20 years uh, in a healthcare organization. So I certainly have the experience of all of that as well, is that when you get into a you know, position of struggle, it gets exhausting. You know, I get really, ex you know, kind of in awe of people like that do like those big open water swims, you know, where they're going across, you know, a big body of water and they're so prepared that even though it's challenging and they swim, 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 you know, they can do it. But, you know, have you ever, you know, just pictured somebody struggling to swim, you know, and they're right in the middle of a big body of water and they're struggling. That's a very, you know, Yes, they're challenged, but they're challenged in such a way that they're getting exhausted and they're getting panicked and all of that. So that's kind of what I picture, you know, in the struggle of leadership is that we can be, you know, across that big body of water, those big plans that we have, et cetera. And all of a sudden we're in a position of struggle and it's exhausting and we feel defeated versus feeling challenged and excited with the challenge and feeling accomplished by the challenge. So what are the reasons, you know, behind this? Well, first, you know, I got to thinking too about, you know, I think people come to a position of leadership because they want to win. You know, I think they do want to win. And so uh, they want to achieve, they want to make a difference, they want to be challenged, they, but they want to accomplish and be excited with those challenges, not feel defeated or exhausted or struggling. So they want to win is what I see as a common trait of leaders. Um, and many start into their leadership positions feeling very excited, hopeful, you know, this challenge is something that they chose and it's all good, you know, so they might start out in that honeymoon period, uh, you know, just like that swimmer going across the big body of water that, you know, first leg is feeling really, really good. Um, but then too often, way too often, leaders then somehow find themselves in this place of struggle. And, you know, what caused that? You know, what rough waters caused that? Um, so I really started, you know, digesting this, you know, kind of thought of what I'm observing of that leadership struggle in my past and seeing it in others is what is the real reason that we find our Selves as leaders getting into this place. So a lot of things came to mind, but then it kind of settled on kind of a core kind of theme. So I want to, you know, walk you through some of the things that came to mind first when I started thinking, what are the reasons that leaders get into this struggle? Uh, one is, um, and I've seen this, you know, a lot when I was a leader of leaders. So when I was a senior leader, I had a lot of frontline leaders reporting to me. And you know, a lot of the times when I would have to, we would call it, you know, pulling them off the ledge, what would happen is they get to this place of extreme struggle, exhaustion, feeling defeated, wanting to jump from their position of leadership into anything else than this leadership role that they were in. And, you know, my job as their leader was to help pull them off the ledge. Well, my real job should have been to make sure they didn't get there in the first place, right? To be proactive and prevent that from happening. But if I had one of those leaders that was at that place, a lot of times one of the things that was behind that was they were short staffed. So their department was short staffed. And so now all of a sudden they have this, the challenge of, you know, their leadership responsibilities plus, 
you know, having to pull shifts as staff. And we work a lot with small rural organizations and they don't have deep benches in staff. So even one person, one position being open for any length of time can lead to this kind of struggle. And, you know, that came to mind first, but, you know, that's just a symptom. That's usually a symptom of a, you know, systemic struggle in the organization related to being an employer of choice and having a huge applicant pool of very qualified candidates so that if a position does open that all of a sudden you know you got a place to go to select the next best person for your team so this you know low morale low engagement poor reputation as an employer you know nobody wanting to sign positions maybe even internally some departments have a reputation of don't sign even positions for internal transfers so there's a systemic Thing behind that um, and being short staffed and the stress and the struggle that causes that causes leaders is really, you know, maybe, you know, just a symptom. Um, but the struggle for leaders is real. And so that would be one of those really big reasons. So, the, you know, going down that rabbit hole of what led them there is the bigger issue and cause of that struggle for leaders. And then I think about the struggle of leaders to to learn about leadership, especially brand new leaders that don't have maybe formal education and training, et cetera, um, and experience in leadership is, you know, it can be a real struggle, especially if your organization doesn't have a system-wide process for ongoing development of leaders. So we might tap a leader on the shoulder or an employee on the shoulder that's a great staff person and invite them to a role of leadership. Uh, because we see leadership qualities and potential in them and they're great at their their day job and next thing you know they're in a leadership role and at best maybe by default they've been oriented to the tasks of management how to put out a schedule how to do payroll but they haven't really learned leadership and maybe the organization doesn't have a systematic way of even defining what that is and then developing leaders new or experienced to that uh, role of leadership so that can cause leaders to struggle right because they're they're just not trained and equipped with the skills of leadership and so that creates this struggle you know we might start out with our excitement and what we do know and then pretty soon we're over our head in water and we're struggling Another uh, reason behind leadership struggle is the whirlwind, um, and that's day-to-day -day operations, right? And so if, if an organization is in a place where there, it's chaotic, where there's lots of fires to be put out, um, again, this is a systemic issue in the organization that leaders have inherited maybe, especially new leaders, is, wow, we've got chaos here. Day-to-day -day operations are not you know, optimized. Uh, they're not set up with systems and processes and empowerment and engagement of frontline staff to you know make sure day-to-day -day operations go well without a lot of intervention and oversight by leaders and pretty soon you know that becomes the day job for leaders is just manning you know the fire stations and so that's exhausting i mean that is exhausting and again it's a symptom of systemic problems in the organization related to optimizing day-to-day -day operations, creating an amazing employee experience, an amazing patient experience, you know, that's safe and satisfying. And, you know, when you have that, you know, as leaders, it's a very different type of day-to-day -day work as a leader when, you know, firefighting is not your primary job and the whirlwind is not spinning so crazy around you. So that's another reason for that struggle and exhaustion and feeling of defeat in leaders. And then resilience, you know, when you come to a position of, of leadership is, you know, you might've had this resilience plan that kept you, you know, uh, resilient and reduced your stress and and gave you some reserves in, in you know your life before leadership but you know the call to leadership compels you to a call for a new resilience plan usually an up-leveled plan um so leaders can you know start out with that energy and that adrenaline and excitement on that you know new role of leadership and pretty soon again that starts to wear down and it's not re you know replenished and they're in a they're in a you know state of of struggle
Um, but really, you know, these, these reasons that, you know, first came top of mind were really symptomatic of maybe some bigger struggles in the organization. So the organization is struggling and the, you know, what it really came down to me is the primary reason why leaders are put in a position of struggle is that there's lack of clarity. Um, and what do I mean by lack of clarity? Um, what I mean by lack of clarity is, you know, leaders want to win. And so there needs to be clarity around what does it mean to win? So what are we working towards? What's the vision? What's the mission? What are those strategies? What are those organization goals? What defines winning? If that's vague, if that's great, it's like swimming across that lake and you see no shore, right? You see no shore. And so that can be very, you know, that can start to cause you a panic, right? You're swimming, you're swimming, you're swimming. And even though you're strong and even though, you know, you're, you're excited about this, you know, swim across the lake, eventually if you can't see a shore, you can't see where you're going, now panic and struggle can set in. So, you know, there's no clarity in many organizations around what does it mean to win? What are our specific measurable goals that when we achieve them, we can be, you know, we can be winners. So that clarity or vagueness um, causes struggles in leaders and employees, but struggles in leaders. So not having clarity about what it means to win and why we need to win is, you know, one of the primary reasons leaders can be set up to struggle. And the other is not having a plan to win. So if you have, you know, you might have these great goals and you see the shore, but you have no plan to win, then as a leader, you know, you, you know, you're, you're not sure what you're supposed to do, right? And that gets into vagueness and, and lack of clarity as well related to the role of leaders. So maybe we know how to do our, you know, work as staff in our departments, but do we know how to lead positive, proactive, results-oriented leadership that actually moves that department towards the winning, the goals, the achievements, et cetera. So that lack of clarity about what it means to win, why we need to win, what's the plan to win, and what's my role in it, that right there causes undue, unnecessary struggle in everyone, right? So not defining, this is how we lead around here. This is how we improve around here, et cetera. And this is my role as a leader in it. So I also, you know, I'm using this analogy about swimming, but I'll also use this analogy about, um, you know, sports uh, and a game. So think about, um, you know, the difference between a pickup game of ball and maybe they're, you know, uh, you know, there aren't any really good rules defined and people keep making up the rules as you go along to playing this game. Like where's the three point line on this court? Let's say it's basketball. Uh, you know, what's, you know, how long are we gonna play, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Who's on which team? What role are you gonna play? Do we have any defined plays that, that help us to win, uh, et cetera. So, you know, there's such a difference between that pickup game, which is supposed to be fun, but let's say it's serious. So in healthcare, you know, that pickup game, you know, would be serious. And let's say we're playing the game of leadership like a pickup game. And, and that lack of clarity is there and that lack of plan is there and that lack of defining what it means to win and what the rules are of the game, et cetera, who's going to do what. I mean, that is, you know, that's very different in contrast to a championship team right and what they do they know what it means to win they know what the rules are they know what the game plan is everybody knows what their role is the coaches know what to do etc everybody knows they have the tools and equipment uh they're not just showing up at this pickup game with the wrong shoes on and you know wearing high heels instead of basketball shoes or whatever like there is a big contrast between being a leader in a pickup game kind of organization versus an organization that truly is run like a championship team that wants to win and repeat and repeat and repeat. Those are two different places to lead, right? But I have to tell you, it is really, really fun to enter an organization. I mean, this is my kind of fun maybe not yours, but to enter an organization that feels like that pickup game where there's not like clarity, there's not, you know, a real defined goal for what it means to win. There's not a clear plan to how we're going to do that and what the roles of everyone is going to be. And then transforming it into that championship organization. 
it can happen. It is so fun to go there, right? And that's actually what we do at Capstone Leadership Solutions in our work and partnering with healthcare organizations all across the country is wherever they are in that state of lack of clarity regarding their goals, regarding the roles of, you know, employee-driven teams and leaders and what that plan is, et cetera and moving in, them into the place where they're really behaving um, like the champions that they can be, right? They can be that. And that turnaround story is just beautiful. Um, and being a leader in that type of organization is, you know, and I can contrast, I've been there in the before and after as a leader. I've been in an organization with that lack of clarity, without that lack of systems and processes for leaders and employees to know the game plan, know the goals, know what their role is to contribute to them, knowing those high standards that lead us there and then being in contrast to that championship team that's award-winning top ranking. And so, you know, what's really exciting too about our work at Capstone uh, over the last nine years and working with dozens of organizations to assist them in this transformation is we have learned a lot about what it means to lead in an organization that is winning and that can win, that can always get better and better and better. And in our new product, Ascend, uh, we actually create, we have the game plan that improves the employee and patient experience. It's safe and satisfying, that strengthens leaders and unites them on a common path. And it is so exciting that one of the things that Jane and I right away, uh, when we you know designed this new system of supporting organizations to be great, is that the leadership piece, uh, what we call the leader deck, has really concrete two-year plans that connects the leaders to those big goals of the organization. Um, and really supports them through proactive, positive results oriented leadership and synergy and being in sync. And this is how we lead around here. Uh, that achievement piece about what are the goals and what are our department's goals aligned with that and what do we need to do. And then also, how do we support employee driven efforts to slow down that whirlwind and make those waters calmer so that we can keep getting better and better and better. And so for two years, Ascend guides employee-driven teams and leaders on this common pathway to greatness to improve the patient employee experience. And when we do that, then we are on the path to growth and greatness. And so it is so exciting. And if your organization is one that is, you know, kind of still in that realm of playing that pickup game where there isn't that clarity, there isn't that plan, there isn't isn't that clear definition of what's the role of teams, what's the role of leaders to get us to that great place, um, give us a call capstoneleadership.net backslash call. Uh, go to our website. There's a place where you can contact us and also reach out to get in contact with us is, you know, that's sometimes where clarity starts, right? Is on that phone call where we're having a conversation about where are you now and what could the future look like with that clarity, with those systems, with those processes, you know, and, you know, Ascend gives you those plans. It gives you access to proven resources and solutions that we know have created award-winning organizations and it also gives you access to our expert coaching and so organizations many of them not just the leaders in it but the employees and the patients served by them are looking for this plan looking for proven plans. They don't have time to reinvent the wheel. And that's why we invented Ascend. So if your organization is looking for that plan to reduce that struggle in leaders, create great results, give us a call, capstoneleadership.net backslash call. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.